بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لیٹ اس کنٹینیو دی چیپٹر سیلٹ کنٹرول اینڈ ان دی پریویس لیکچر وی ڈسکسڈ ہاؤ اے سیلٹ ایکسکلیوڈر کین بی یوزڈ ٹو کنٹرول دی سیلٹ اینڈ آلسو اے ٹریننگ وال وی کین یوز ٹو کنٹرول دی سیلٹ You know that there are two major concepts to control the silt. One is the exclusion of the silt. Uh, and second is the ejection of the silt in the canal. In case of exclusion of the silt, the basic concept is that we try to exclude silt at the entry into the canal. So for that purpose, we provide silt excluders. And the basic concept of the silt excluder is that the lower layers of the flow, they carry more sediment discharge. <coughs> And the upper layers, they carry less sediment discharge. So the lower layers which carries more sediment concentration and more sediment discharge, those are passed through the tunnels of the silt excluder, whereas over the slab of the silt excluder, the water is relatively silt free or having the less silt and that water is allowed to enter into the canal through the head regulator of the main canal. So that concept we discussed in detail and then we also discussed how we can design a silt excluder and uh, how to compute the total area or the number of tunnels and how to compute the height of the tunnel ETC. So how much do we keep the discharging capacity of the silt excluder? Please tell me, how much do we keep the discharging capacity of the silt excluder? So 20% of uh, discharge. Of what discharge? 20% of its discharge. Of flavor discharge? Tell me. 20% of the discharge of the canal, whatever is canal, the canal discharge, it's 20% is uh, uh, supposed to be to enter through the silt, uh, through the, uh, these uh, silt excluders, which are basically tunnel. Now we want to discuss the ejection of silt. That is the second concept. And for this, we provide silt ejectors. And you know the silt ejectors, these are provided in the canal. Just uh, slightly on downstream of the head regulator of the main canal. Whereas the silt excluders are not provided in the canals. Those are provided in the river. Okay. So that is the difference. So in case of silt ejection, initially we allow entry of silt into the canal for a few kilometers, then from the head regulator to few kilometers in the canal, we provide a silt ejector. And uh, it is a curative measure. Curative measure means first we allow it and then we cure for it. There are two types of the silt ejectors. Number one is the vein type ejector or tunnel type silt ejector. Uh, like, uh, you know, the over silt excluder. What was the type of the silt excluder? It was tunnel type. Do you agree? The silt excluder, which we have discussed, they were tunnels. So in this silt ejector, one type is vein type or tunnel type. And the second is vortex type uh, silt ejector. So these both we will discuss. Uh, in detail, but before that, we want to know 
the location or the layout plan how a silt ejector is provided in the canal and how the sediment is managed. So that is given in this diagram. So here there is a tunnel type silt ejector and this is the river and it is moving in this direction and this one is the what is this structure? Berach. Yes, this is Berach. And here there is, what is the structure here we have? This is an off-taking canal. Main canal. But, but, but what is the structure do we provide here? Head regulator. Head, regulator. head regulator. Head regulator of the main canal. And this one is the main canal. So we don't provide here silt excluder. This is the location to provide silt excluder. OK, and uh, we do not provide silt excluder. We say, OK, don't worry, allow the sediments to enter into the canal. But at this location, we provide silt ejector. Now what it does, please, uh, please uh, mute your mics. And uh, you know, uh, then what it does, it has again the same concept. That the more sediment concentration in the flow is in lower layers and less concentration in upper layers of the sediments. So what we do here is uh, the we provide tunnels very similarly as we have provided tunnel in silt excluder. So here the lower portion have the tunnels and it has a slab. And then what we do that from here, from this canal, you know that the more sediments are being carried with the lower layers. So that lower layer water, which carries sediment, is passed through these under tunnels, are silt excluded. And that water moves in this direction. And this is the escape channel. And uh, this channel is at a a relatively high slope and then this uh, water which carries high sediments it is discharged back into the same river on the downstream of the barrage so and now the water from upper layers uh, which is which has less sediments is allowed to move further on downstream in the canal so that is the basic concept of the silt ejector. Could you follow it? Yes, sir. OK. Now, tunnel type silt ejector, we want to know about the basic concept and what are the design parameters for the tunnel type silt excluder. The first thing is that it is located few kilometers downstream of head regulator of the main canal, all right? So, you know that this is the head regulator and just few kilometers we provide this silt ejector. The second is. Yes. We do not simultaneously provide Normally we do not provide simultaneously because this is extra uh, you, know, you know expense. If you are also providing silt excluder, you have to spend money on it and as well then you have to provide a silt uh, ejector in the canals for example if you have seven canals so are four canals three canals so you have to provide a silt ejector separately for each canal okay so normally we provide where one or two canals are of taking from one side for example one canal is of taking so instead of providing silt eject a silt excluder we provide silt ejector in that canal okay Jee? Uh, now yes, the width of yes. Hey, in your last lecture, you have case studies discussed the Sakhar Barrage, which is an artificial island provided for uh, water to divert. That was training one. Yes, training one. Sir, when we have six uh, silt excluder and silt ejector ki form mein devices present, then we have to provide the island. No, 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 no. That, what was the reason? Why uh, provide silt right bank canals? They were receiving more silt. What was the reason? So, concave site. Actually, the river, 
was flowing in a bend at that location. And you know that on convex side, the silt entry into the canal is not much, whereas on concave side, it is more. So that was the reason. If the river was flowing over there in a straight way or in a straight pattern, so there was no need of the trading wall. Okay, sir. All right. The width of the channel should be divided into number of tunnels. This is we are talking about at the uh, silt ejector. Now here, so this width is divided into number of tunnels, like the tunnels we saw in case of silt excluder. These tunnels curve either to the right or left and pass under the canal bank to terminate in a regulator, which is provided with gates to regulate the discharge. So there is a regulator is also provided here. But these tunnels, they passes under the bank of the canal. So these are the banks of the canals and these are at lower le level and these uh, are basically the tunnels. So the water which carries more sediments at, in lower layers that moves here and then it is discharged into the main river. Number three, the height of the tunnel should be how much? 20% to 25% of the design depth of water in the canal. OK, so you can see that these are those tunnels which we provide. The canal is, is moving in this direction. So, so lower portion, 20 to 25% of the height of the uh, water or flow in the canal, we provide these tunnels. So these tunnels are sharp edged. They facilitate the easy flow. So water flows through these from lower layers and there is a slab over it. And then water moves towards the right or left. And this is the bank of the canal. So water moves under the bank of the canal. So it is moving towards the right, OK? And uh, you know the water from upper layers goes down, which has less salt. So this is the basic concept. And how much, by the way, do we keep the height of the tunnels? How much height of tunnel? Uh, so 20 to 25 percent of the 20 to 25 percent of the depth of flow in the canal. By the way, how much do we keep the depth of uh, silt excluder? How much do we keep the depth of silt Yes, sir. How much? Sir, press level of silt excluder should be same as that of the head regulator. Yeah, that is the of the head regulator. How much is the depth we do we keep? Depth of the tunnels. Uh, maybe equal to the. Uh, no. So ten percent, kya hai kya? Anji? So ten percent of D. Oh, mashallah. No, no. We studied it. Yeah. We studied very well that the height height of the tunnels should be one third of the total depth. We will get it. Anna? What is this? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's it. This is another hour. One third, including the slab thickness of the tunnels. And how much do we keep the height of the tunnels in case of silt ex silt ejector? Only 20 to 25 percent. Mean thodi depth rakhte hain. One third is 33 percent. Okay. Number four, the top slab of the tunnels usually projects 1.5 to 2 feet upstream at the entrance. Wo thodi bahar project hui hai. Number five, 20% of the canal discharge 
is usually diverted into the ejector. How much starch do we allow? In case of silt ejector, 20% of the canal discharge. So where that 20% water goes? This 20% water goes back into the river on downstream of the barrage with sediments. Okay, it carries a lot of sediments and those sediments are removed from this canal and on downstream. So the water which moves has less sediments. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. By the way, how much do we keep the capacity of the silt excluder? How much do we How much is that? Anji. How much do we keep the capacity of silt excluder? Wo bhi itni hoti hai. Twenty percent of the canal discharge. Okay, ye same hai. This means that. 20% additional discharge over and above the canal design discharge is allowed to enter the canal at head regulator. Do you get it? Yes, sir. For example, this canal discharge is 100 Q6. Then how much we should allow to move here? 120 Q6. Right? Or if it is if it is 80 cube mix, it is flowing here. Then how much we will allow here to enter 100 cube six? So out of 100 cube six, 20 cube six will will be is diverted through the silt ejector back to the river on downstream of the barrage. The rest 80 percent water moves in the canal. So it means uh, here. The water which should enter into from the head regulator of the main canal, it should be 20% more than the canal capacity. Number six, the method of calculating the discharge is same as that for silt excluder. Because these are tunnels and what was the formula to compute the discharge? Q is equal to C A root of 2 G H. OK, where C is the coefficient of discharge and we, we, we have one equation to compute the coefficient of discharge that we discussed in the previous lecture. And now number seven, normally a minimum head of 2.5 feet is required to operate the ejector. Ejector pe kitna head hona chahiye, kam as kam, 2.5 feet. Of course, normally it is more than that. A velocity of 2.5 to 3 meter per second through the tunnel is adequate to move sand size sediments. So as the sediment should not uh, be dropped or deposited in the in the tunnel uh, cell ejector, so a high velocity is recommended from 2.5 to 3 meter per second. And uh, then escape water is thrown back to the river downstream of the head works as we have discussed that this water is then thrown through this escape channel. Number 10, the escape channel is given a steeper slope so that the cell discharge back to the river through the short routine route. OK, the steep slope means it must get it, it. It has more sediment carrying capacity and it should carry whole of the sediments. Number 11, the discharge through the tunnel is governed by the gate opening of the escape channel. So if we have provided some gates, here 
and then uh, so if it is closed, these are closed, it means we are not allowing any water towards the uh, uh, silt ejector. The reason is in those days, maybe the river is not carrying much sediments and there is relatively silt free water. So there may not, may not be necessary that we should operate silt ejector. But when we want to operate it, we must open these uh, gates. And uh, number 11, the discharge through the tunnels. Uh, OK, number 12, efficiency of the silt ejector is calculated as it, it has the same formula as we discussed for the silt excluder. I U D U means upstream, D means downstream. So this is the sediment concentration on upstream of the silt ejector in the canal. And this is the sediment concentration on downstream of the silt ejector in the canal. If you see here, so this is the canal. So here this uh, uh, the sediment concentration is more on upstream of the silt ejector. Whereas on downstream of the silt ejector, so sediment concentration is lesser. So this is the formula to compute the efficiency of the silt ejector. So if uh, the sediment concentration on downstream is same as the sediment concentration on upstream, then how much is the efficiency of the silt ejector? Zero, sir. Zero. Zero. It means the silt ejector is not performing a duty. So if it is very less, then the efficiency of the silt ejector would be increased. All right. So now this is the photograph as we have discussed earlier. These two are the banks of the canal. So this is the direction of the flow. And this is the left bank and this is the right bank of the canal. And here the silt ejector is provided towards the right side. And here to after right side, it, 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 go, it, it throws the silty water in the river <coughs> on downstream of the barrage. This is one more uh, uh, plan of the silt ejector. You can see this is the direction of the main canal. And here these are the veins are provided, which turns the flow towards the uh, the flow is uh, moved towards the left or towards the right. Yeah, me. Left, sir. Left side. Towards the left, because you should stand in the direction of flow. So towards the left, and these are the tunnels which are provided. Okay, and here there are ton in this tunnel there are several veins to reduce the turbulence. And uh, then this is the escape channel and from here it is discharged into the river. So and this is one more uh, plan and the sections of the silt ejector. So this is the direction of flow of the canal. So this one is the right bank of the canal. This is the left bank of the canal. So again, the silt ejector is provided under the right bank of the canal and the and, and, and the escape channel is on the right side of the canal. So these are the tunnels and uh, these are the veins which are provided in the tunnels. So water from the lower part which carries more sediments moves here and uh, that is through escape channel and it is discharged into the main river on downstream of the headworks. Whereas the water from the upper layers, which carries less sediments, is basically discharged on downstream of the uh, silt ejector in the canal. Now, this is the section AA. Where is AA? This is AA. So if you will cut here from here, and if you will see uh, from front side, so you will find these two tunnels. So these two tunnels and with the slab you can see and 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 then from uh, this side you will see this passage. So th that is visible. And uh, if this is the section BB, 
and the section BB. Where is BB? This is the BB. OK, so this is BB and this is the canal section and these are the, you know, the tunnels are provided and this is the slab of the tunnel and this height is how much? Kitni hogi hai? How much would be the height? 20% of total lab. 20 to 25%. Okay. So we will we will take any value. And uh, now another type of the silt ejector. That is the vortex tube type silt ejector. So partial has uh, given the, the concept initially of uh, this type of the silt ejector, uh, mainly to eliminate the bed load. Uh, through vortex motion, you know, once vortex is created, it creates turbulence. Bring bad load in suspension. The bad load comes in suspension and then thrown out through the tube. So it consists of a pipe with a slit along its top placed across the bottom of the canal at an angle of around 30 to 90 degree to the direction of flow. So now you can see in this figure. Uh, this canal is going in this direction. And this is the section A, which is here. So this a pipe is provided on the bottom with this opening on top. A slit is provided on the top. And uh, the diameter is roughly same as the, the, the height of the flow in the canal. So in canal, water is flowing like that. And uh, once the water will flow, its bed load will enter here and due to this uh, uh, tube uh, the water will start rotating means the vortex flow will take place so whole of the bad load that will come in suspension and this pipe has given certain slope uh, towards this loose flow towards this channel and as it has having slope so the water also move along with vortex flow in this direction, but it moves in this direction and the water uh, which carries a lot of sediments. Uh, those are basically discharged into uh, this escape channel and then it is discharged into the uh, river on downstream of the headworks. So that is the big concept. And uh, you know the a properly designed vortex tube ejector can be more efficient than any other conventional ejector with less water loss. So it has a less water loss. The two lips of vortex tube shall be at the same level. So this is one lip. This is the another lip of the vortex tube. So this is vortex tube here. That is the vortex tube. The diameter of tube our pipe should be nearly equal to the depth of flow in the channel as we discussed earlier. Number of tubes can be increased towards downstream. So, so, so the diameter of this tube is the same as depth of flow here. So means here, uh, somewhere here would be the depth of flow. Uh, this much maybe up to this. So this is the depth of flow in the channel okay so this and this time it is same from here to here and this diameter is same but the number of tubes can be increased okay the ejector gets best result for fruit number 0.8 by the way at what fruit number do we design irrigation channels? Uh, 
Yes. So less than yes. one. No, no, no. Less than one. Less than one. Wrong. I am talking about the urban channels. You have applied a check of the fruit number. That the fruit number of the alluvial channel should be less than. 0 0.3. OK. <clears throat> that should be less than 0 0.3. Yes, for line channels, it could be less than one, but for. Uh, unlined channels, it is less than 0 0.3. And how much do we need here? We have to get 0.8. For best results in case of uh, tube type cell detector. So how we can uh, increase the velocity of flow by velocity, but the fruit number. So that we achieve by fluming you know, where we provide uh, the cell detector. We have to flume the width of the Canal. So we reduce the width of the canal. Hence, fuming that may be up to 75% may be required to increase fruit number from 0 0.2 to 0 0.8. So once we do the fuming, so and also we increase the slope. So then what we can do? We can increase the velocity of flow, which will increase the fruit number. So how much fruit number do we require? In case of tube type cell detector, 0 0.8. So the water which should come here, it, ha it should have a fruit number of around 0 0.8. OK. And this is the diagram of the vortex type cell detector. This is one more diagram. Here, you know, this display is one in five is provided, means this is the fluming is done. The width of the canal is reduced, and also here, a slope is provided. And due to that, uh, here, the silt, these tubes are provided. And in these tubes, uh, what happens? Uh, you know, the vortex flow takes place, which rotates the water in the tube. And 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 you know from here it has carried a lot of bad load. Now that bad loads come in suspension, and then in this direction it is uh, discharged into a channel, and in that way, and then from that channel the, it goes to escape channel, and which uh, discharges uh, the water with heavy sediment load into the river on downstream of the head works. So these. This is the basic concepts of the cell ejectors. So there are two types of cell ejectors: tunnel type, your vein type cell ejector, and the second is vortex type cell ejector. So do you have any question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The sir, yes, the second type cell ejector. Yes, me. Apne kya fraud number zero point eight ko approach karna chahiye. Ji. So this may actually vary depending on the amount of the bed load or maybe the curvature of the spirals. No, of course, if we do not have much sediments, suppose, then we, we may not require very high value of the fruit number. Fruit number means what the fruit number indicates. Fruit number indicates the turbulence in water. If fruit number is lesser, is come the velocity come turbulence come if the fruit number is higher there is more turbulence so definitely depends on the silt load which a canal carries but in pakistan we normally use a fruit number value of 0.8 around the cell detector okay sir now this is the Last topic, differentiate between silt excluder and silt ejector. And uh, this you will do yourself. Now you know what is a silt excluder and what is a silt 
ejector. So you can differentiate in many ways. Uh, for example, one is the location. Location wise, how you can differentiate silt excluder and silt ejector? Sir, the location of the excluder is at the, uh, in the, it is provided in the river in front of the, the you can say, Andres Lucy's and the head of the head of the species. Yes, sir. And, and it is ejected to the head regulator. Head regulator. And still, ejector is provided at the downstream side of the canal. No, in any canal, in the just canal. few kilometers downstream okay. of the head regulator. Okay? Yes. Okay. What is the another difference? This this was as far as the location was concerned. The height of the tunnels. Height of the tunnels. Difference. Okay. How much is in cell tax eluder? Sir, it is almost one third of the anticipated depth of water flow. Yes, good, good. And, and what? How much? How 20 much to is 25, 20 to 25 percent of the anticipated depth of flow. Okay. Canal. Then what is the another difference? After, you know, in case of cell tax eluder, the habits, uh, the the sediment laden water. The water which carries more sediment is passed where? In case of silt excluder. Sir, it is allowed to pass under the undersluices. Under the undersluices where? Into the, the river, downstream of the river. Okay. And what about in case of silt ejector? So for the silt ejector, we provide a separate, uh, you can say, diversion canal and step channel. Form, yes, sir, escape channel, and from that channel, channel we again put this water, heavy silt water, into the river. Into the river. Very good. Any other difference in the silt excluder and silt ejector? Do in case of uh, silt excluder. Do we have increased the uh, discharge to the canal uh, as, as far as its design discharge is concerned? No, sir. No. But what we have to do in case of cell ejector? We have to increase by 20%, sir. Yes. We have to draw 20% more water and uh, of course that basically again joins back uh, to the uh, same river on downstream of the headwell. Okay, now tell me what are the similarities between silt excluder and silt ejector? Are the common common things, common factors? Both are, both are required for the exclusion of the silt from the water. Yes, yeah, silt, but where? Where to reduce silt entry? Into the, the canals. Main canal. Into the canals. So actually both are provided to reduce entry of silt into the canals. Okay. What is the another similarity in both? both so both have tunnels like structure. Both may have tunnels. For example, in case of silt ejector, it may not be having tunnels. It may be a yes. vortex type. Huh? What is another similarity between the both? How much do we keep the discharging capacity through the tunnels in both cases? 20% Same. 20% of what? Design discharge. 20% of the canal design discharge. Okay. So another similarity in case of tunnel type silt ejector and silt excluder, both they have tunnels and the tunnels are provided. What is the next similarity? The layers of water which carries more sediments is passed through the tunnels. Okay. 
and the water which carries less sediments that is passed through the upper portion of the tunnels and into the canals. So these are the main uh, similarities. All right. And this is how do we do silt control in canals. So do you have any more question about this about this silt control? Uh, yes, sir, excuse me. Yes. Sir, how I gonna differentiate which type of Excuse me, sir. Please. Sir, how I can differentiate which type of silt scooter your or silt detector should I provide? So what yes, is the which, which device is to be provided? Yes, All sir. Right. Which, that is the thumb rule. Which device is to be? It depends on the number of canals which are of taken on that side. For example, if the number of canals of taken from one side maybe are two or three then it is better to provide one silt excluder. So it will it will control entry, reduce the entry of silt in all three canals. Instead of now here providing silt ejector separately is difficult, OK? But if of taking canal is only one. From maybe from the right bank of the barrage or left bank of the barrage, then we may provide a silt ejector. Yes, sir. All right, any more questions? Because we have finished this chapter. And uh, if you have any questions, you are welcome. Which of course the questions will uh, you know, increase your understanding about uh, these structures and their functions. And you know, in, a, in examination, you should be uh, very precise towards uh, the question. For example, we just ask you, just write down function, you write everything. <laughs> if it is asked, just to describe this, then you have to describe. OK, if we ask you just differentiate between silt ejector and uh, silt excluder, you write definitions of both separately and then you assume that this is the difference. This is not the difference. Difference is difference. So you have either make two columns and write differences or make sentences. In each sentence, you discuss both and differentiate. So be specific and to the point, huh? Yes, sir. So any other question? Otherwise, I would like to uh, stop the lecture. Do, do you have? No, sir. No further questions. OK, your attendance first. I am now downloading your attendance and uh, then if you have no questions, then OK, we are stopping here the lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz, sir.